Hello. Right, welcome to part two of the engine rebuild of the International 434. Um, going to continue the autopsy, get right into the guts of the machine and uh, see if we can find any actual problems with it. And uh, first thing to do, I think, drain the oil and have a look at the sump, see what's in there. The wind's starting to pick up. I'm not sure how much of the audio is going to be usable on this uh, of this footage, so um, yeah, we'll see how we get on with that. Right, let's get to it. Okay, one bolt. Right, let's try and extract a piston or two. First, I'm going to get rid of the engine oil. I've got an oil burner that this will go in and uh, I'll put on my foundry at some point when I make one. There is a video on the oil burner. God, wind's getting up. Right, let's get rid of this. Right, let me show you the inside of these sump. This is pretty horrible. It's actually been rained on so it looks even worse than it, than it did when I pulled it off. First thing to notice, there's loads of instant gasket here. So someone's been in here already. So what's, what's in here isn't 50 years worth of stuff. And a little tip when you're using this, you don't have to put on the whole tube. It's soft at the top and then as my finger goes in it gets firmer. So you might be able to see I've just drawn a line right through that gunge. I'm not kidding, this is like half an inch thick in places. <laughs> as grim as you like. That's undone that, which is the bottom of the, um, well, that's around the crankshaft. Now the piston should poke up and out through the top. So on initial inspection the piston doesn't look too bad to my untrained eye but what happened when I pulled it out this the top piston ring was broken so that <laughs> that certainly wasn't helping the compression and you can see here how, how coked up it is on top although I think I've seen, I have seen worse but yeah that, that was definitely broken before I pulled it out Interesting. Right, so we'll see what the others are like. Number four. Oh, yeah. Another broken ring. And that one's intact. So pistons one and two are intact at least. Pistons three and four have got this ring here cracked. So these shells here are what sits between this end of the piston and the crankshaft and they're well worn. As you can tell by looking at the colour. It's all coppery in the middle there. So just here is the oil pump which sat at the bottom of all that sludge so there's a mesh here. I must remember to clean that as well.
Okay, here we are back in the workshop with the cylinder head on the bench, which makes life a bit easier. Um, so I'm going to strip this down, get all these all these components out, have a look at them, see if they're all serviceable. I think they are. It's actually looking all right this bit. But so far, I've needed two special tools. Uh, this is one. This is the valve spring compressor, and the other one. For removing the injectors, you generally need one of these, a slide hammer. So once you've undone the injectors, you just hook that, hook this bit over it, and give it a good whack like that, and they'll generally pop off. Both of those are quite hard to substitute for, so worth having. So the use of these things is a lot like mole grips, or vice grips, whatever you want to call them. These things, whatever you call those, I call them mole grips. Anyway, this works in quite a similar fashion. It's now loose, but with just a little bit of travel, and then I've got to squeeze this hand, these handles together. There we go. And you should be able to see as I do that, I'm pulling it, the spring in, and then these collets these collets here become loose. So those are the collets that hold the spring in place. Now when I release it, that top bit comes off, the springs are loose. And the valve comes out. This is an exhaust valve and it's kind of what you'd expect. It's very cokey. It's a soft build up there, it's not a not a baked on carbon. In fact, it's so soft I can get right through to the metal there, which is I think that again is because it's been running at tick over most of its life. When I've done this on motorbikes, for instance, this black here is, is rock hard. Well, it's literally rock hard. It's baked on carbon. And it takes a, yeah, a lot of effort to get it off. But this is just coming off just with my nail. Yeah, it's hard to imagine doing this without the, the right tool. Here we are, a closer look at the cylinder head. It's obviously upside down here. And now I can actually have a good look at the valve seats. See what that's looking like. They all look okay, except for this one. There's loads of pitting here. This is number one cylinder, and it's got a strange pitting on it. I'm wondering, yeah, I don't know, what would that be? Whether something went in there and bounced around a lot. So I've, I've dismounted enough now that I can tell what I'm going to need to order. I'm not going to order the, the valve kit because they seem serviceable. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get the engine rebuild kit, another set of bearings for the um, um, big ends, and, and, then, and then oil filter. I think that's about it for now. So while those are on their way, I can get stuck into this, and then I've got to build some kind of extractor to pull those liners out of the engine block out there. So yeah, join me for that. You might be wondering what this thing is hanging here in the workshop. It's, uh, it's part of a sculpture. This is one, one of five. I've got to deliver later on. Let's show you the rest. I haven't had that much involvement with doing these sculptures. I've made the, the spine, if you like, and um, my friend Celia has actually made these birds. 
Well, we've got to go and install this soon. It should be uh, interesting. <laughs> They're all going to be hung from um, the roof of a shopping centre a long way away. Anyway, that's beside the point. So, yes, I should place an order. Carry on stripping down the head and make an extractor. See you next time. Cheers.